One thing that interests me primarily is to realize in my own life that whatever I consider to be inside is not necessarily different from what is outside. And in that sense, the, the painting work, the performance, is all about showing this infinity that is always present in my own life. The very four elements are the basic components of this body. The earth, the fire, the air, the water, are all at the basis of our own life. 1200 years ago, Lin Chi in China already said that as uh, soon as you have an element of doubt in your mind, for example, you are caught or obstructed by the element of earth. As soon as you have an element of desire, you are drowned into the element of water. As soon as you have an element of, uh, or a thought rather, of anger, you are scorched by the element of fire. And as soon as you have a thought of joy, you are drowned by the element of water. So body-mind is actually fundamentally resting on these four elements. And working with fundamentals is, in my view, important because it, it brings us back to the very simplicity of what we are made of and doesn't get us entangled into the complexity of life as we know it. The reason why I got into the work with Jean-Paul was um, because I was very interested in how landscapes are constructed in a way, how they're understood, how the way that um, we perceive the landscape is um, influenced by, like us, in fact, in the way that we interpret, the way that we edit, the, you know, we see particular moments of the landscape, um, we, we, through our vision, uh, through our senses, we frame particular parts of the landscape, and often this is something that we're not thinking about um, on a sort of day-to-day -day experience. And so the, the, the work that Jean-Paul does is in part about examining that aspect of how do you frame a particular part of a landscape, how do you introduce the body into the landscape to um, transform your perception of the landscape. In the beginning, I used to think that my idea was the best one. That I was somehow the center and I could think of something and elaborate around it. But really the input of everyone around was quite secondary. Until I really looked at the shots after years of work and I always realized that when people were in freedom after the shooting, it was invariably much better than what I had planned. So I started to be a little bit less self-centered and I not necessarily invited but listened more to whatever people would come up with whatever they wanted if they wanted different color than the one I thought oh I said oh maybe I should try that I want a different place they would look in the camera and propose something different so I would let a lot of things go when I think it's really recently that I realized after years and years and years of work that the work is not really starting from one place, which is that me, me, me. No, it's really the assemblage of all forces that come from totally unexpected areas. And you could say in some ways that the work makes itself. It just happens to be. JP would have an idea if he wanted to use specific people for um, a photograph, for um, a shoot, and a lot of times though, we got to we got to help him decide which ones we wanted to do because he wanted us to be just as excited about the work as he was. So um, oftentimes we would look through a book of classical paintings and 
um, his his own sketchbook and ideas that he had. And if something like spoke to us, then we would do it. If we were in the right kind of um, environment, if it if it we would kind of we would drive to the location, we would scout around and look for a good place to start setting up and just kind of feel it out and see like what could work there. Uh, it was very, it was all very collaborative though. Like he really involved us with it. And it was really nice that he did that because we got to um, have a lot of say in what we were doing, which was a good thing because it was just so time intensive. That, like it was really nice that we wanted to be doing those specific projects. I started 40 years ago working with basic materials such as sand and ice. 25 years after that it moved into pigments and then it moved into the bare body. But the commonality between all these elements is that they are all primary elements, the grain of sand, the grain of pigment, the drop of water, the bare body. In other words, I love to come back to what is essentially indivisible. Uh, and in a way, it's the symbol of what we are, uh, not just tangibly, but also in terms of relationship with the rest. I've discovered that it's not just this body that is indivisible, it's everything. In other words, if I take a piece of, even this piece of paper, and I throw it out of the universe, actually the whole universe would come up, would follow that piece of paper, and, and attached to it, it would disappear with it because everything is so intimately related. And one of the great things about working in the landscapes that Jean-Paul discovers is that there are these naturally occurring moments where, um, unlike say Richard Long's work, um, where he might walk a path, a straight line, and in that straight line you see the, the body in the landscape or an artifact of the body in the landscape, Jean-Paul discovers those kinds of moments in the landscape. And so, when you sort of arrive in this place, you see all the kind of, you know, vastness and variations in the landscape, but you very quickly sort of hone in on what it is, this moment that Jean-Paul is looking for. The first color that we use all the time is the blue of the sky. And the blue of the sky is very symptomatic, again, of who we are, this infinite being that is from time to time obscured by the clouds that pass through and the blue is really conditioning all the other choice of colors that uh, we come up with with few exceptions I'm sure the the second element is the relationship with the horizon line we seem to think that it is fixed but actually as we approach it it changes and is continuously changing and it has the, the fascination of bringing together a kind of geometry to the vertical presence of the body intersecting with the horizontal line of the horizon line. It creates a locus and it creates a symbol of course that had been used for, for millennium in, in all kinds of cultures. The geometry is actually a fabrication of the mind that I'm very interested in uh, that allows us to enter, which is another way to enter infinity. When you see the particular point of view, you get a totally different interpretation of the landscape. The body as part of sky, which you begin to understand that what is so profound about the sky is what we see in. You know, what we see or how we interpret it or how we feel about it. It's a little bit different from satisfaction, which is uh, the coming together of a certain hope and desire with the experience. It's almost like a more of a thought than an experience. As I usually say, when you taste the orange, there are really no words that can be attached to it. And what's really beautiful when you are in the desert and you work, or when you are working at home writing, or composing, etc., 
is that there are moments where you are feeling that you are more of a channel than the decider. And therefore you access things that you're discovering along the way. And there is nothing like discovering along the way. It makes you curious, it makes you very close to that baby look that is always discovering the world as if it just came through. It made me want to take photographs. I've never had really thought much about it before I worked with JP. And I have, I have, not, have not come anywhere near like setting up any kind of uh, crazy situation, but I have been thinking a lot about it now. Um, uh, so that's, that's probably the most profound thing that I took was just learning to really engage with your surroundings and um, use, use your resources in a very pure way. Um, and I remember one, one day before we went out on to the location, we were sitting at the table and he had a leaf on the table and he wanted us all to, well, all, all three of us, including himself, to pass around the leaf and hold it in our hands and like look at it and talk about it. And I was just like, I, would, I didn't know really what was going on, but like just like looking at him and speaking to him, he just uh, is such a, I just keep using the word pure, but like he really thinks a lot about everything the leaves, you know, like looking at it and what it is and how we're connected to it. Whatever we do is always a mixture of delight and pain. It's never one or the other. They just come as one. So satisfaction is not exactly a word that would apply there. But there's still a joy in, in living that pain. It's almost like giving birth. and. Um, and then feeling the delight as well. The work I, we do is very akin to, for me, uh, the old masters, in this very Western-centered way of seeing it, the old master that would spend their time painting the chapels and the churches in Russia or in Italy, uh, taking their time to be totally involved in the painting as if that is the only way, that is the only thing for which we live, without any other explanation, as if we were just stars, and we are actually stars, that turn around in the universe, shine their little light, and at some point disappear again into the ground.